Hard to believe it's been 10 years. December 14th, 2012, the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. Uh, every year we, we think about it, we remember it, but can you really ever put yourself in the position of the, the uh, parents, the families that lost loved ones that day, 20 children, children killed, six staff and teachers. I now live up in that general area, not far from Newtown at all. Go by that area, see the Sandy Hook sign every, every time I do. Um, but so what? I mean, it, it can't compare to what those who have lost so much on that date 10 years ago lost. Um, but I have with us this afternoon someone who can feel it painfully every day, and this is such an important day for her to remember and to promote what we hope is a fix to the problem of these school shootings. Scarlett Lewis is here with me. She lost her son Jesse on that day 10 years ago. Scarlett, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I'm so sorry for your loss. I, I, I covered the Alex Jones trial in Waterbury where this was all brought so vividly to the forefront again uh, in the context of a bizarro case with, you know, Alex Jones. Uh, uh, luckily for those who were invested in that, and I'll ask you this question, it had to be somewhat satisfying to see the result of that trial. Uh, if it does nothing to bring back your loved one, it was something. What was your reaction to that? Well, thank you for having me on, Michael. Uh, I, I thought that it sent a strong message that truth is very important. And uh, of course, that trial was unprecedented. It was the first time that we had had to do something like that in our society. And I think that it uh, sent, sent a strong message and people are now going to think about uh, making sure that they tell the truth about events that happen. And of course, for me, the reason that I uh, was part of that trial is because I have been spending the last decade since my six-year-old son was murdered in his first grade classroom at Sandy Hook Elementary School, uh, trying to and advocating for our children's safety and their health and well-being. And so for obviously for somebody to be saying that uh, it never happened and that I'm not a real person and that Jesse never existed is going directly against what I was trying to do. Yeah, and it was so outrageous. Uh, but if I can find a positive, it did bring back to, to the forefront this, this event. And it makes you think, okay, well, hey, it's been 10 years. I'm sure we've fixed it. Uh, but in that 10 years, there have been 984 school shootings. We hear about the biggest ones, Uvalde, probably the, the one that comes to mind for most folks now. And it tells us, if nothing else, we didn't learn a thing. We haven't fixed a thing. Thoughts? Uh, unfortunately, that's exactly what Uvalde, Texas, uh, which was almost a carbon copy of the Sandy Hook Elementary School tragedy, did teach us. It taught us that there have not been a lot of forward progress made in keeping our kids safe. And, you know, I think uh, who said that it's insanity doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result? We, as adults, all of us are responsible for our children's safety, and we can keep them safe. We know what to do. We just have to do it. And I don't know what's going on. I don't know if people are losing hope or feeling like they don't have any control of the situation or waiting, worse yet, waiting on our politicians and leaders to fix this for us. And I've been saying that Uvalde told us that that is not going to be the case, that we are going to have to take action ourselves as parents, as grandparents, as community members. Our children's safety is our responsibility, and we are going to have to start addressing the root cause of the suffering that leads to this violence. It also leads to a lot of substance abuse and mental illness as well. It is, uh, it's not a law, it's not a pill. It takes a little bit of work, but I've been advocating for us um, re realigning about a quarter of our resources. That means time, energy, and money on addressing the root cause. What we've been doing is focusing on the problem, uh, watching the problem grow, and always a step behind. So flesh that out for me. You, you started the, the foundation, I think, in 2013, so you've been on this almost from the beginning. 
What can we do? I mean, you know, uh, I think we understand the philosophy, the theories, but what can people actually do? That's a great question. And, and uh, the opposite of the anxiety that a lot of parents and children are feeling is positive action. So doing something. And I, really, I wish that I knew this when I was a single parent with two little boys running off to school every day. I wish that I knew that I was responsible for their safety even in school. And I think first and foremost, what I've learned in my 10 years of researching this subject and advocacy is that their 100% has to be a, a comprehensive essential life skills program in the school that teaches kids how to have healthy relationships, how to self-regulate, how to manage their emotions, how to make responsible decisions and more. These are skills and tools that we are not born with, that we have to learn. And of course, we also have to reinforce and practice. Are they taught at home? Hopefully, best case scenario. But I can tell you that I didn't have these skills and tools. Uh, before my children, uh, my my son was murdered. I have a surviving older son, and I've learned them through the Choose Love movement and the no-cost lifespan comprehensive programming that we offer. Uh, I, I've learned them as an adult, and my life is exponentially better. It's actually helped me face the difficulty in my life and not only learn from it, but grow through it and be strengthened by it. And this programming is online for everyone. Make sure that your schools have some kind of programming that's embraced. Bring it into your homes. Make sure that there's a community component. Uh, we are stronger together. Fear divides and, and love unites. And so we're going to have to start choosing love and coming together in order for this to be resolved. Yeah, and I want to make sure you get out the, the contact info for the organization so people can go online and figure it out to more specifics. But is it, in the big picture, is it a money thing? Is it a, an administrative thing where school boards are maybe not as helpful in promoting the programming you suggest? Is it other community uh, activists that might be able to help? I think that's a great question. What is it and why aren't we just doing this? And honestly, I think it's a little bit of the way that we're wired to think from birth. We have a negative bias. We focus on the negative. And so what we do is we focus on the problems of all of these issues. So violence, uh, if you look at the pathway to violence for uh, for schools, uh, it starts with a grievance and then it stair steps and escalates up into an attack. We focus most of our efforts and funding on the attack end. There's a billion dollar industry that is around the attack end. When uh, in reality, we know now that that isn't working. I mean, I, I'm all for hardening schools. Unfortunately, we have to do that. But we absolutely 100 percent must address the grievance end, because when kids have the skills and tools to manage that grievance within themselves or help others do that, then that, that anger will not escalate into violence. But this is also just as relevant for mental illness and substance abuse as well. I mean, let's check those out of control problems. We started off with the war on drugs in the 70s, and it hasn't gotten any better now. We have more drugs offered on the street than ever before. We really have to address the root problem. And that goes for mental illness as well. We can't wait for mental illness to escalate. And when we do that, we're going to be in a situation where we are right now, where our kids are in a crisis, where hospitals are running out of beds for suicidal ideation and attempts. We need to fortify our children with the essential life skills they need to manage hurt and pain that we know that they're going to feel in life. You know, I uh, during COVID, I actually uh, wrapped an RV with the Choose Love message, and I took it out on the road, and I visited schools and homes and communities, and I was astounded at the pain that even very young children carried around with them. And I was so grateful that we're able to offer them skills and tools that provide them with relief. But 
every, every school, every home, every community should be doing this right now. What we're doing isn't working. I told myself, uh, you know, at the 10 year, I wasn't going to be diplomatic anymore. I mean, this is this is ridiculousness. We live in America and we have this this idea in the back of our heads every day that our, our children might get shot at school. I mean, this is absurd. And waiting for people to to uh, to fix this for us when they're this is not a priority. I've got to tell you, for 10 years, I've been front and center. I am traveling. I've traveled around the world several times. And this is not a priority for our politicians or leaders, because if it was, our children would be safe. So let's take it into our own hands and let's address the grievance end of the pathway to violence and let's reduce and prevent the suffering before it starts. You know, I think about Uvalde and, and I hope it's an aberration there because I can think back not all that many years ago where I'd go to my own kid's elementary school and I've got to be buzzed in and identified and, you know, I'm the bad guy until I prove otherwise. Uh, you know, so those are relatively simple measures that apparently just fell apart at the school in Uvalde. And so that's got to be so frustrating. That to me is something that could have been, it seems, prevented with some of the simplest measures, let alone some of the more sophisticated things you're talking about. I mean, Uvalde was, uh, it was, there were so many errors that, I mean, we couldn't even cover them <laughs> if you gave me an hour. Uh, and and there's, there's always human error, by the way when you're addressing the attack end of the pathway to violence, when you're talking about hardening, there are almost always human errors. I mean, think about it. You have an active killer trying to get into your school and uh, and and it, there, there's so much terror that uh, the the blood flow to your prefrontal cortex is cut off. I mean, you're in freeze, fight, or flight, and really where you should be, but you're not thinking correctly. And uh, absolutely, there needs to be a lot of training. Obviously, Uvalde, there wasn't enough training with the police force or the educators in school. So training is necessary, but just as necessary is this focus on the other end of school safety, which is the grievance end. And that is a comprehensive essential life skills program that absolutely must be taught in every school. It's a, it's a massive problem. We're so lucky to have you, Scarlett Lewis, on the forefront of this thing. I'm sorry for the reason that you are at the forefront. Uh, you have another son, is that right? I do, yes. Jesse how, has an he, older brother. He's now 22. Wow. How, how's he doing? How, how's the family? He's really doing well. Uh, he is. He has also practiced these essential life skills that we've learned to help us deal with our pain. He has graduated from University of Connecticut with a political science degree. He is a script writer now. He has a series on YouTube called uh, Insult to Injury, J.T. Lewis. So check it out and, and like it. <laughs> nice plug, Mom. I'm going to let you do one more the, for the foundation. Give, give us the contact info. Thank you. So uh, please, I just ask everyone to help spread this message and share this with everyone that you know. It's chooselovemovement.org. Our programming is lifespan comprehensive and it's no cost. And the reason that it's no cost is because I know that it would have saved my son's life and it can reduce and prevent the majority of suffering that we're seeing now in our society. Scarlett Lewis, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, a tough day. Try to enjoy the holiday season. And thank you so much for, for sharing with us today. I appreciate it.